I'm Robert Barnes, and growing up in Homestead was a beautiful experience between the Everglades and Biscayne Bay. Flying planes back and forth, zooming in and out, it, in, being involved with all the creatures that existed there in the sunlight and the clouds and the sky. Butter. He was my first real friend. I met him in first grade. When we found out that we both lived down the road from each other, we became best friends right on the spot. Butter got his name from his older sister. She couldn't say brother when he was a baby, so the name Butter stuck. I can't say if I ever really knew his real name. It was just Butter Williams. One day, I hopped on my bike. I headed full speed through the avocado grove to meet Butter. I spotted Butter cutting across the tomato rows. Shorty had plowed them the day before. Shorty was one of our help. He lived in the south side of the farm because he was black. Butter looked so silly bouncing across them tomato rows. You should see yourself, Butter. <laughs> what is that, your sister's bike? Shut up, Robert. My bike has a flat tire. Butter followed me past the barn where my dad and his hunting friends hung out. The barn was the center of life in Homestead for many of my dad's friends. They stood around with their Budweiser cans or plastic cups of whiskey, trying to out-talk each other with their hunting stories, like shooting at a deer from the airplane or scaring up a covey of quail and killing two with one shot. Dad always had a Tampa Nugget cigar in his mouth. He said he just chewed on it, so he'd never get cancer or anything like that. Dad was standing in the doorway of the barn. Hey, Spud, where are you boys going in such a big hurry? Dad liked to call me Spud when he was in a good mood or not bothered by me. He'd say, I look like a spud on a potato. It was one of the nicer names he had for me. He said, my bottom lip stuck out. So he also liked to call me nigger lips. We're going to the fort, I yelled. We kept riding. The day before I built a fort, it must have been three times taller than me. I used the old wooden tomato crates that Shorty had stacked next to the barn. Butter and I got inside. We climbed the crates to look out the top. Butter said, hey, there's a bunch of nigger kids coming from over there. Looking over the south side of the fort, we could see six black kids walking up. They were crossing them dead tomato rows. I said, what are we going to do? We got to defend the fort, Butter said. I yelled, hey, you niggers, get out of here now. I yelled at them, but I wasn't sure what I was doing. I, had been taught, I hadn't been taught to act that way, but I'd watched how adults had acted towards black people, even the ones they cared about. It was like an invisible force, like somebody pushing me from behind. The kids stopped, but then they started walking towards us again. Get your slingshot, Robert. Butter jumped down, picked up a bunch of rocks. He climbed back up the crates, gave me a handful. I was sweating now, not sure what to do. They ain't done nothing wrong, I thought. They're just kids too. I was disconnected from myself. My hand reached into the back pocket pulled out my slingshot. I put a rock in the sling and I fired it over the kids. I deliberately tried not to hit them. One of them was pretty big and I was scared. Butter yelled again, get out of here, go back to where you belong. The kids turned around and they went south. 
Some 54 years later, I still remember how uncomfortable I felt. As a teenager, I not only removed the N-word from my vocabulary, but also my dad's, at least while he was around me, you know. We all have actions or words we wish we could take back. That invisible force I felt from my friends, from my father in the barn, from the farm, got me to throw that rock and say those things. I wasn't a stupid kid or a mean kid back then. I was just misdirected. <laughs>